We have fire. It's burning down pretty good now. It's wasted all this time and effort. Let's give this another shot. Welcome back to another episode from Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. I'm Bill. Glad you could join me. In this episode, we're going to take a look at uh, finger and toenail care, primitively. Stay tuned. Nail care is uh, something that I don't think hardly anybody ever discusses in a, uh, a long-term primitive living situation. It's certainly something that would have to be addressed. Uh, <clears throat> Native people in the past, what they would do, uh, fingernails are basically tools. They could be used for uh, various things. And in our society, uh, longer, female, uh, longer uh, nails are kind of frowned upon uh, when it comes to males with females of course long nails are are accepted so in the past uh, it, it was kind of a different different uh, viewpoint on that and ancient peoples didn't really they didn't really look at it negatively and in primitive living you know nails will wear down naturally because primitive living the, the chores, daily chores, uh, it's pretty rigorous. It's very physically demanding. And uh, so fingernails will more or less uh, wear down naturally through the course of, uh, course of work. Uh, there are a few ways that they were dealt with uh, in primitive times aside from chewing them off or them breaking off. It's usually not good to wait until a nail breaks. It may break in a in an odd way instead of straight across. It may break up into the into the the uh, uh, into the skin area, and then you have an open wound. And wounds in the bush can quickly turn septic. So uh, the way uh, some native people uh, dealt with that, they would use abrasive stones, and uh, you can soak your nails in water and uh, once you soak them they'll they'll get uh, uh, very soft and you can use an abrasive stone uh, to uh, file them down um, the uh, I've seen some people use pocket knives I remember when I was a kid there was old timers they'd pull out a pocket knife and you know I don't really suggest doing that one slip and you can you can really cut yourself good um, I mean if you can do it that way more power to you but uh, for the the intent of this video here uh, we're gonna explore a couple of a uh, couple of different ways so I'm gonna demonstrate actually an abrasive use an abrasive stone this one here is a stone there's a lot of granite out here a lot of igneous uh, granite and it's very abrasive actually makes a good sandstone for braiding uh, different things. Bone, you know, shaped bone, for example, or even wood. Um, but uh, my fingernails, nah, they're not too bad, but they're actually in need of some trimming. So what we're going to do, we're going to demonstrate on the thumb here. And uh, I'm going to 
reposition the camera we're going to see just uh, and they're not soaked in water so they're at their uh, natural hardness we're going to see how effective this uh, stone is at uh, at abrading the nail down back around there the campfire okay that's eh, not too bad but it could definitely use a trimming so this is the uh, there's a lot of this stone out here and uh, this is a uh, igneous granite it's very very abrasive so this is uh, what it looks like before so we'll just do a little experiment here and see how well this would work in a long-term primitive living scenario if this is this is all we had. Well, it looks like it's already, it's already grinding it down. And of course, in a long-term scenario, you don't want to wait until your nails are real long before you add dress them. You know, keeping up on a little, little maintenance a couple times a week. Keep things in control, I think be a good activity to perform in the evening around the campfire after the day's chores are complete it's a great stone for this actually and foot care is very important. Your feet are your means of mobility. And if you develop a foot problem and you can't get around, you're in big trouble. So definitely address, keep the nails in shape and address any issues that uh, may pop up like blisters. I wouldn't wait until you develop a, a bad blister because then you have an open wound. If you start to uh, notice a hot spot, I would uh, take steps to, to fix that. That's usually ill-fitting shoes. Or if your socks become wet, your feet start to slide around your boots or your shoes. Toenail, fingernail fungus. Athletes feet can all be dealt with with tannic water which is very acidic and antibacterial and anything that is acidic is antifungal. One of the the old methods of dealing with vehicles stopping out here. One of the old methods of dealing with uh, toenail and fingernail fungus in the old days was uh, vinegar, ordinary table vinegar. You just soak the nails <laughs> Guy pulled over to go I pulled over to go pee and he, he didn't see me. He had to cut it off midstream. He looked up and noticed I was over here. It's kind of funny. There's a mountain road that passes by pretty close here.
So that is whittling it down. Filing it down, rather. this camera to focus here. That's a lot better than it was when we started. So yeah, you just make the, uh, um, I shot a video not long ago on uh, on how to make tannic water in the bush. I will include that video in the description box below. So uh, toenail fungus, fingernail fungus, athlete's feet, things of that nature. You just mix up a strong batch of tannic water and just soak your nails in it. 15 minutes soak per day, it'll it'll clear it up pretty fast. Athlete's feet can also be dealt with. Uh, it sounds kind of gross, but urine is acidic. You can either urinate in a container and then soak your nails in it, or urinate on your feet and then just let them dry. Primitive living is not clean. Well, that's not bad compared to the other thumb that actually whittled it, whittled it down pretty nicely. A little rough on the end, but That'll smooth out with just daily activity. I will see all of you very soon on the next one. Everybody take care. Bye-bye.